Hello there, it's Tim. I wanted to do a tutorial on modeling and texturing a low poly book. And we're gonna start in Maya here. And the first thing we wanna do is just create a cube. And this tutorial kind of assumes that you have some basic understanding of navigation at least. I can do a tutorial separately on that eventually. So we're gonna take the cube and we're just gonna scale it down to be kind of the one side of the book Imagine like the the cover or the back side of the book. We're going to take that. And once we have that, we're going to hit W for the move tool and control D to duplicate it. And we're going to figure out how thick we want our book to be. About right there. And we're going to duplicate that one more time. This is going to be the pages of the book. It's going to scale that up on the interior a little bit. You're going to right click, go to face, grab that, slide it in. So that's kind of the size of the face there. The sides of the books are right here. We're going to grab both sides, scale those in a bit. And now that we have that we're close, let's say this would be kind of the spine of the book. And we'll bring that in just a little bit. And now there's a few ways you can handle these edges. But first, we're going to grab both of these pieces and we're going to combine them. We're going to hit this key right here. Looks like a little circle around some objects. And now that that's combined, we're going to grab Go to faces and grab these two faces and now that we have those i'm going to extrude these faces out and you'll get these different arrows and you want to grab the blue one right there you could you don't want to grab the square you want to grab this one and i'll pull them out just enough so we have kind of the thickness of the spine of the book now that that's pulled out we're going to grab the top and bottom pieces and I'm going to go over to this tool, which it should be open if it's not. Just click the little hammer and cube. And we're going to hit bridge. And this little dialog will pop up, or maybe it'll be down here, depending on the version you're using. And we want to have, maybe let's try two divisions. Because we might, maybe we'll have a little bit of curve to the back of the spine of the book. We could do one division, but I'm going to do two. And now that that's done, we can just close that out. Okay. Now you'll notice like the book, it's a little bit too much information up top here. So I'm going to remove some of these objects. And to do that, we're going to click on target weld. And right now it's on verts, which that would work. We could do one at a time. But in this case, let's actually go to edges and grab this entire edge at a time. You just click the edge you want to get rid of or move and combine. And you'll see the little yellow arrow show up and select and pull it over. Go on the bottom, do the same thing. There we go. And there we go. Now we have starting to look a lot more like a book now. Okay. We want to add a little bit of character to this book. For instance, the pages we want to give so they have like a curve and there's some more information to the pages. I'm actually going to use the multi cut tool again. We're just going to click that. And you'll notice it lets you draw all over it, but we're going to hold control and shift will snap to the center it kind of snaps the verts or snaps to center points i'm going to click right in the center and add one depending on how much detail we want in this we could add one or two since we're kind of going low poly i'm going to go a little higher than low poly i guess and we're going to add a few and now that we have those in there we can grab these edges and i can scale them like if it are i can scale them on this this angle a little bit but you notice how they're they're not scaling together we want to do so that they scale all at once we could select them all but that's not going to give you a nice curve to your book so let's hit b and that'll bring up the soft selection tool sometimes it might be all yellow like this if it is hold b and left click and scroll left and right and you can change the size of your, size of your soft selection we don't want it to select the top ones around here but we do want these center areas so let's hold it until it gets so that these have color and these stay blue. Now when I move it, it should all move together. Let's increase that. Maybe we want a little bit of soft selection there. Let's scale it in a little bit like that. And we don't actually want the back to be scaled, but we can just grab it here. Maybe we want a little bit of that, but just not as much. And you can kind of make some fine tune adjustments now. Maybe turn soft selection off with hitting B. We're going to R and scale this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we have that basic bit of the book done. 
let's add a little bit of uh, let's see some more it's a little bit more character let's put a piece of paper kind of sticking out of the edge here and we're going to go up here and grab a just a polygonal plane and you hit that and it automatically makes it and we want to reduce the amount of subdivisions on this polygonal plane we're going to go over to our subdivisions and just do maybe one by one and scale it down i'm going to slide it over bring it down there we go So one problem with this is that it does actually have the faces. It only will show one side. I'm actually going to make it's going to be a little higher poly. We're going to extrude, click that face, extrude out a bit. And if it turns black like that, that means your normals are flipped. So actually, let's extrude the opposite direction. There we go. And since we're making it this much more information, let's just fill this whole area since we're going to have all these polys anyways. We could do this in texture, honestly. Probably should, considering. And I'm going to grab these verts and just pull them in a little bit. And all I'm doing is just doing a drag selection while verts are selected. Just dragging them in. And now I'm actually going to... Uh, grab the multi-cut tool again and just have just the page selected and drag across the corner and you'll notice it makes a nice cut across there and now i'm going to grab those verts on the edge and just bend the paper down a little bit maybe even twist it just a little bit so it looks like it kind of pulls with the verts okay and maybe i'll maybe i'll go over here and pull these in so it looks like it's a little more loose leaf or something like that Maybe a page has can been torn out. Someone's left a marker and something along those lines. Uh, one thing you'll note though, uh, with this page, it doesn't have, you're supposed to always have four sides on all your polygons. This one's fine, but if you look at this one, it's got one, two, three, four, and five of those hidden ones you can't see. A nice way to take care of that pretty fast is if you go to mesh, triangulate, and we'll take a look at this just by itself. I'm going to go up here and click on this to isolate just that image. And that gave us a bunch of tries, but we want quads. So I'm going to do quadrulate. And now that put it back to that. And there we go. So that automatically added these extra edges. So it has the correct number of sides everywhere. And it usually gets you where you need to go to start with. Let's go back. If you remember, I had added these extra pieces here. And I'm going to click on this one and then click another one and double click it and it'll select all of them around. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and then pull it out just a little bit more. And there we go. Uh, you'll also notice that this edge here is a little bit kind of odd looking and I want to make that edge a sharp edge. So I'm going to grab it really quick and go to I believe it's, or is it UV? Actually not even sure, uh, surfaces maybe? Uh, I think it's mesh display. And we're gonna go to harden edge. There we go, I'm gonna go up this one too. Mesh display, harden edge. If you wanted to have make an edge soft, you can just do the opposite and do soften edge. Maybe we'll, we will end up doing that in the book, we'll see. How it looks when we get to texturing. Nice, undid that back to a hard edge again. I want to add a little bit of interest in geometry to the actual book cover as well. So we're going to select this face here, click just the top face, and we're going to extrude and then scale the extrusion down to about there. And actually, you know what, we're going to do this to both sides. So let's undo that. Control Z and select the other side as well. Go back, hit the object, put a face, click that face and then top face and now extrude again. And when you're doing this, as long as you keep it without clicking and just click these, like you'll be able to do both sides at once. 
and if I hit scale here, so I can hit scale. If I were to accidentally hit R and then do the same thing, it's going to scale them downwards. And you'll see they're starting to shrink in like that. So I'm going to undo that, get back to where it was. Okay, now that that's scaled like that, I'm going to hit extrude one more time. And this time we go down on the blue one. And if you look at the other side, it's actually going inwards. So it's going towards the normals. And I want to make a little bit of a bevel, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit there. And just a little bit there. Maybe even a bit more. And go inwards just a tiny bit more. Okay. There we go. That's starting to look pretty cool. What if we want the book to have a bit more of an interesting silhouette? We're going to add an additional piece of geometry to the corners. So let's make another cube and just start scaling that down. And I'm going to hold V and this will snap it to the verts. I slid it over there and scale it down a bit more. I'm hitting F to zoom in on that object. And I want this to be right along the corner like that. And tweak it just a bit more. Perhaps I want to make this so it's more like an L shape. So what I'm going to do is bring it in like this. So I've got about the amount I want. And I'm going to go back to this cut tool, the multi tool, and get about a, so it's a square corner on the edge here. Go like that. Grab this face, make sure it's cut all the way around, and extrude this face over until I have a nice little corner there. And you'll notice that, you know, we have a lot of extra geometry there again. So let's go back to target weld and edges and just target weld these edges towards the center. And now that you have one done, unless you wanted to add some more detail, which you might want to bring this edge out just a bit. Let's grab this, this whole side and this whole side and scale them in just a tiny bit. Or maybe instead of doing that, let's just scale the, the paper part in. Go to object mode, grab that. Scale that in just so we have that corner there. Okay. Now that that's done, you can just check to make sure it's not touching on the edges there. Maybe we can move it in just a little bit. I'm going to grab this flat area and slide it in just like that. Maybe for a little bit of additional detail, I'm going to bevel these two corners. So select those two edges right here and here and hit the bevel button. And you can slide this until you have the amount of bevel you want. And there you go. And once again, this ends up, you have one, two, three, four, five sides. So I already made a shortcut for that triangulate and quadrilate. So I'm going to hit triangulate and then quad. And it automatically fix those for me. Okay. And then we're going to duplicate this item and just flip it over. You can mirror it too. And just slide it over here. Another way to get that perfectly done is we could delete that one and we're going to, this is a little bit odd, but I'm going to duplicate it, move it over and then combine it and see how it set the pivot point at the very center of the grid. I'm going to uncombine it and just delete my extra one. And now that gave me the perfect center. So I'm going to duplicate this one and then scale it. And as I scale it, you'll notice over here, it says minus 9.96. We're just going to do minus 1. Whoops. Minus 1. Hit enter. And that's perfect. If on your program you're doing this and you end up with the, this looks really dark or black, you might have to go up into your surfaces, or sorry, into your mesh display and reverse or set to face on the normals. And that'll, that should fix it. Now that we have those two, I'm going to duplicate, grab two of them and combine them into one object and then duplicate that and just move it down and line it up so it looks about the same. So I have a little bit more space there. Okay. Now that that's done, we can take the whole object and I'm just going to combine the entire object 
and we've got almost centered here. I'm going to move it up just a little bit so it rides right on the center point of the grid. I ungroup it and then group it back again. Well, that's combined, not group. And there we go. We have the full modeled book. In the next phase, I'm going to show everyone how to UV it. And I think I'm going to UV it in Maya this time just to keep the programs consistent. And after that, we will texture it in Photoshop. Maybe we'll texture it first and then UV it. And that will be an interesting way to use kind of UVs and textures where you can kind of apply the UV to the textures you already have existing. Sometimes that's a little easier for people to understand. So just uh, if you liked the video, like it. Uh, I'd love to hear some comments, so do that too. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. And I'll see you in part two. Thanks.